Hello and welcome to episode 70 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 13th of June. So I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I podcasted. I've certainly been up to lots of different crafts this last week. I just don't know what's happened. I've just gone craft crazy. <laughs> so... I've got some knitting, some macrame, some spinning, some cross stitch, some bobbin lace and quilting this week. <laughs> what I think I'll do is I'll make sure that I put time stamps down below in the down bar so that you can flick um, to the different sections just in case there's one or two sections that you're not interested in. I've also got um, my blast from the past which is my nan one of my nanny's dresses and my shop update at the end so there's lots of sections hopefully this won't be too ridiculously long <laughs> we shall see so we've got two sort of craft alongs going on at the moment well one is just beginning so going back to the one that's still going on from a couple of months ago we've got the spring shawl along that I've been doing in collaboration with Caroline from the Love to Sew podcast there'll be links to her website and her Ravelry group in my show notes which will be on my website my website um, you can find the show notes on the left hand side in the menu and it says blog and show notes that's where you find it um, so the shawl along is still going on to the end of June so don't forget to come and join in with the, the shawls that you've been making in the last couple of months I've got the discussion thread in my Ravelry group and Caroline's got the finished objects thread in her group so don't forget to get your finished objects over in Caroline's finished objects thread in the Ravelry group we've got the summer sock along which is starting I said it'll start on the 16th and it's so it's three days away but I will start the thread um, after I've recorded the podcast so that you can share all the lovely yarns and patterns that you'd like to have a go at um, so that'll be lovely I've got um, a couple of sock patterns that I've got on my MIG9 I've, I've took a photo <laughs> I printed a photo of the patterns I wanted to do of um, the nine sort of main patterns I wanted to do over the year and I've got two sock patterns here so we've got the Stormy Days socks from Thick Thistle Glen Designs that I'm going to do and the French Meringue socks by Marianne Hickerman I think that's how you say it, Hickerman I will put them in the show notes, the links to these anyway so those are the sock patterns that I'm going to be doing but I've also got um, a big long sock tube that I've been knitting um, that will hopefully become a couple of pairs of socks by the end of the sort of knit long. So the summer sock along is going to go from the 16th of June right until the end of August so you've got plenty of time and basically the rules are that you're knitting or crocheting a pair of socks that are adult size. So there you go it's quite open and to be honest if you make a sock with another craft I'd love to hear about it so um, you can pop that in the Ravelry thread too. So it's going to go on over in the Ravelry group I'll have a discussion thread and then a finished objects thread and I will be drawing prizes from both um, so watch out for that I have got two lovely um, discount codes from two lovely designers that have contacted me in the last couple of weeks so the lovely Katrina Workman who's Katrina's creations on Ravelry has gifted us a beautiful pattern which is called the basket weave shawl pattern um, and it's a really nice textured shawl which you can use different colours to sort of stripe um, and you can use your sort of leftovers I suppose then and it's a really lovely texture. Pop a picture up here <laughs> if I haven't already. Um, and Katrina has really kindly given us a discount code so that if anybody wants a copy of the pattern they can get 20% off. And the discount code is KC20 in capitals um, and you can get 20% off her beautiful pattern. So thank you so much Katrina. Um, so I think I'll give um, the copy of the pattern away with the shawl along that we've been doing because that goes in nicely and with that I think um, so I'll probably draw that from the discussion thread so don't forget I'm going to be drawing some um, prizes from the discussion thread as well as the finished objects thread for the shawl along so make sure you come and chatter over there 
and also in addition to the shawl pattern the lovely Anne from Thistle Glen Designs has contacted us um, to say there's going to be a discount code off all her patterns and she's got a new pattern called the Summer Bloom Socks and she's actually designed this pattern in one of my colourways and she used the Where the Wild Gro Roses Grow colourway I'll pop a picture up here now so you can see it um, and that's a really beautiful sort of floral um, panel down the side of the sock um, and the discount code is actually off all of her patterns so the one that I showed you off my Make 9 this one here, the Stormy Days socks is also by Thist Thistle Glen Designs so the 25% code off that would work as well so the code is Craft House Magic 25 and I'll put it on the screen don't forget that there's um, uppercase for the craft house magic just for the first letter you'll see it on the screen anyway and I will also put the code in the show notes so that you can actually cut and paste it out of there the code will be valid from the 14th of June until the 12th of July isn't that kind of Anne thank you ever so much Anne and to Katrina as well so that's really lovely of you guys thank you so much for supporting the podcast um, so that falls in nicely with the sock along and the shawl along as well doesn't it <laughs> So let's get into the actual nitty gritty of the podcast. Let's talk about the knitting. So I've actually only got one work in progress and then I've got some projects that I thought were finished but I've been titivating. <laughs> so I'll show you that after this. So first of all I'll show you my shawl that I've been working on. So the only whip that I've been working on at the moment properly, apart from some socks, but I'm not going to show you because I've just been knitting straight and I'll show you it when I've actually got some more um, to show you, is my shawl and it's my Lewenid shawl and the pattern is by Isolde Teague. I know I haven't done very much, but I think you can see how that beautiful patterning's coming out there now. There's a lovely textured stitch inside these cable bits and that's going to be fantastic when it's finished. I've just got distracted by too many things. <laughs> so the yarn that I'm using is Sol J and I was unsure as to sort of what, where, well, where the yarn was sort of from. I knew that it was 100% sort of sheepy wool but I didn't know the breed that it came from and somebody kindly commented on the week on last week's video. So the yarn is actually called um, Palsau yarn from the Palsau Norwegian sheep breed and it's a cross between a Swedish Gotland and a Norwegian um, grey blue grey blue Spelsau. So that was really interesting. Thank you so much to um, Errol, Errol Knits who commented last week. That was really cool. Uh, it's nice to know a little bit more about the yarn. I suppose if I'd have Googled it, I could find it. But that was really interesting. So thank you so much. So that's the work in progress that I've been working on this week in terms of knitting. But then I went back to a couple of older projects. So a little while ago, I was knitting this cardigan. Um as a garment to wear at Edinburgh Yarn Festival which I finished but I didn't add buttons so this week I've been busy adding some buttons there and I actually had these in my stash um, and I thought they went really well unfortunately I, I had one less so I, there should be another button up here really but I ended up um, just putting the ones I had and to be honest I probably won't wear um, the buttons done up anyway but I also put on a lovely tag. So Barbara from Knitting I Love gave me this beautiful tag um, while we were at Edinburgh Yarn Festival, which is 2019. If I get that a bit closer to the camera. Um, and she gave this to me and I thought, how lovely would it be to actually sew it onto my cardigan um, that I knitted in 2019 for Edinburgh Yarn Festival. So it all fits together and it's a bit of a memory really. And I think because it's pink, it goes quite well with my little cardigan. So there we go, I actually finished it off. <laughs> Took me a while, about three months to sew some buttons on, oh dear. <laughs> so if you want to see some more details of this cardigan you can see um, my Ravelry page but the pattern was the Cherry Bloom um, cardigan and it's by Lena Tosti and the yarn that I used was um, John Arbor Knit by Numbers and I was really pleased with how this came out although it has pilled quite a lot because obviously it's a very soft merino merino's got short fibres, it will pill but hopefully, as I wear it, it will sort of pill less, hopefully. 
this is the theory anyway we'll see um, and it's actually it's been a little bit warm to be wearing this because it's quite a thick dense knit um, but hopefully when I'm getting to autumn time that'll be perfect to keep me nice and cosy so that was my sort of finishing off the project number one and then I dug up my Madewell cardigan and the Madewell cardigan is by Hohi Locatelli and I was finding that my neck was stretching out a lot but I've done a little bit of knitting surgery on this so what I did was around this neck bit you can really see um, this rib was knitted straight with no decreases in it and I've actually pulled that in with some crochet just to keep it nice and sort of flat around my neck because it was sticking up a little bit and it was stretching quite a lot because I'd done quite a stretchy bind off so what I did across the top of the work was I actually just did um, a single crochet all the way along the edge keeping the tension nice and tight and I knew that I needed to sort of um, shorten the length by sort of half roughly that was just in my head and I thought I'll crochet across here pulling it as tight as I can um, to keep it so that it's going in a little bit around the neck and that has worked really nicely um, so you can see that it's sort of pulled in there um, and also I wanted to stabilize this is now the inside um, this seam here because I'd cast off in quite a stretchy cast off as well um, so I went along there and I just did slip stitch all along where the little seam was where I'd picked up stitches um, around the neck of the cardigan and I just did slip stitch and just kept it quite tight um, and making sure that I wasn't actually scooching it in too much uh, but just so that it didn't stretch because there's a lot of weight going around the neck especially because it's quite a long cardigan and I did that all the way down the front um, because I had an issue as well of the front was sort of hanging down longer than the rest of the cardigan um, so it just didn't look very nice so now I've done that it's really made it a lot more stable I shall actually try it on for you you can actually see that I've got one of my Agnes t-shirts on the patterns Tilly and the Buttons Agnes and I just made a short sleeve version <laughs> I shall put my cardigan on so I don't know if you can really you can't really see the bottom of it but now this is a very good illustration. I can't even stand on my stool really because you won't be able to see me then. But it, um, the bottom of the cardigan is, is not as stretched out so that it's a straight sort of seam across the bottom there. I'll see if I can take a picture of myself in it later <laughs> so you can actually see. And around the neck here it's lying flat. You can't see because of my hair very well but there you go. <laughs> But it's pulling flat into my neck rather than sort of flapping about as it was before. So I'm much happier with it now that I've done that and it feels a lot more stable. So in the future if I knit another sort of superwash cardigan in a, in a sort of an open knit like this, it's quite a loose knit, um, I'll make sure that I don't cast off in such a stretchy bind off so that it sort of holds together. I was worried in case it sort of stretched around the arm so I actually did a slip stitch on the inside of where the sort of decrease line is on the arm just to give it a bit more strength you can't actually see visibly if it's changed anything but I think that it'll make it last longer if that makes sense and because I'd done this the single crochet all the way around the front there I actually ended up doing the single crochet all the way around the bottom so that the rib sort of matched and I used some I actually used some of my sparkle base that I'd got left over from my Vertices Unite uh, because the grey in it is the same as the You Spin Me Round colourway that I used for this um, but it's a sparkle base it's just that I've got some left over and to be honest you can't really see that it sparkles <laughs> Rather than opening a whole new skein of yarn, I thought that'd be a waste. Um, so yes, the yarn that I use for the main body of the shawl is the You Spin Me Round colourway in my own hand dyed stuff that you can get from my shop. Um, but I can actually wear it now. Thinking about it, I probably could have done with knitting a slightly smaller size because it is a little bit 
uh, more oversized than I sort of anticipated. Um, I could have gone down a couple more sizes on the sleeve as well. I know that I'd done one size so that it fitted around my bust and then I actually chose the size of the arm which was a couple of sizes down so I reduced under the armpit already so um, I could have done with doing a slightly smaller size there. I think it's better when I do, I choose the size of the garment according to my upper bust measurement and then add some short rows in rather than um, relying on the measurement for the bust to actually fit me all over because my shoulders are narrower if that makes sense. So hopefully you'll have got a few tips from that. But there we go. <laughs> So I've been adjusting it so now I can actually wear it. I am thinking actually that it might still be nice with some fabric lining on the inside um, but we'll see. So my first thought to fix this problem was to add some ribbon just on the inside of this seam all the way around the neck and all the way down the side but I found that because I was using sort of centimetre, centimetre and a half wide um, ribbon it wasn't following the contour of my neck very well and I thought it might be worth just trying to use a crochet stitch to sort of cinch everything into the right size and then I can always line it afterwards as well because it's difficult to know what sort of shape pieces to cut to then line it um, if it's not quite the right shape as it is. But now it's the right shape, I could possibly line it with some jersey um, or something a little bit more stable than that, but we'll see. But at least now it's not sagging at the front and it fits me a lot better. So hopefully you'll see how that um, fits into my neck um, a lot better now that I've cinched it in with the crochet crochet, crochet stitches. <laughs> oh dear, this is going to be a long podcast. Um, so that's two things that I can actually wear properly that are actually properly finished now, That even though I've said that I've finished them before. Oh dear. <laughs> so... And that's all my knitting done. I've got some macrame next to show you. So last week I showed you this one. This was my plant hanger that I'd made last week. But I wanted to make another one for another plant that I've got here. And it's like a little baby one. <laughs> I don't know what these plants are called. You'll have to look them up yourself. This one's got like heart shaped leaves on. But I just saw it at my local garden centre. Um, and I just picked it up. I think it was a tiny little baby plant for one ninety nine, But it has sort of doubled in size since I bought it. But aren't they sweet leaves? So I've done a very similar pattern to what I used last time. Just made it a bit smaller really. But isn't that lovely? Much nicer than just having plants hanging or standing on the side on the on the um, windowsill. I'll just pop those back. I haven't actually hung them up properly yet. Um, Adam said he'd do it for me. I know it's not very feminist, is it? Getting Adam to hook up my plants for me, but I have to make him feel useful, don't I? <laughs> Oh dear. Right, so that's the macrame section. I have some spinning to talk about. I I can't believe I haven't spun for so long. It's just silly. Absolutely silly. Um, a couple of my friends were chatting about it and I thought, why don't I get my spinning wheel out? Once it's out, I'll think to use it and get it out. It's whatever project I see first, I end up doing, I think. But this week, I've just been grabbing all sorts of things. So I'd picked up um, some roving from a shop at Edinburgh Yarn Festival and it was the Hawk, what's it called? The Hawkshaw Sheep um, shop, I think she's got an online shop, hawkshawsheepyarn.co.uk and I'll put the link in the show notes for that. And it was, um, that I did actually buy that yarn separately, um, but I did buy a little 50 gram bag of some Shetland yarn, fleece, not yarn, <laughs> and I spun it into this. I don't, if I, I don't know if, how good you'll be able to see this because it's almost black, but isn't that a lovely coloured fleece? Isn't that gorgeous? Don't look at my spinning too closely because I'm a bit out of practice. <laughs> but this, so this is a Shetland um fleece which well roving that I picked up um, and I was trying to spin it to four ply thickness um, but like every time I try and spin with Shetland it always comes out thicker 
even though I think it's going to come out thicker so I must spin it thinner <laughs> so I, I think it's about a DK weight um, but 50 grams should be enough for a hat if I'm careful if it's not too big um, but I put lots of twist in there and it's a nice springy yarn let's show you how that's come out so there we go I'm not quite sure how, how well you'll be able to see it um, but I've washed it and it's ready to use I was a bit impatient to be honest I did the first ply one evening I did the second ply in the next evening and I actually made put the plies together on the same evening I should have let it rest really but sometimes you just have to ply <laughs> but there we go um, it's a nice balanced yarn thank goodness so I've remembered how to balance the yarn nicely <laughs> It's just not the most even or fine in the world, but I think that'll work nicely for a hat. And anyway, when you knit hand spun up, it just looks neater anyway. <laughs> so after I've been um, spinning that, I decided that I needed to get some really pretty stuff out. So I'd got one of these um, merino tops with silk in it, and I'd picked this up from you and Ply, and I have started spinning this. I've only done a little bit though and I'm not taking it off my wheel so I will pop a picture up here of how it looks so far so hopefully I'll do a little bit each day um, I find that spinning for long periods I end up getting fed up of it so I think that's probably why I go through periods of spinning and then not spinning for ages because I overdo it instead of just doing a little bit at a time and I just get fed up if I just do sort of 20 minutes at a time it should be fine this is the theory anyway so that's my spinning that I've got to talk about and I also picked up my cross stitch now those of you who've been watching the podcast for a while oh fabric avalanche <laughs> you'll know that I've started this sampler and it's this is the picture of what it'll look like so I picked up this sampler from a charity shop so it's I think it's from the 80s this sampler um, so I've had it absolutely ages um, already when I got it from the charity shop so it's it's quite an old pattern um, and I've done this much on it so far so this the time well the last time I picked it up um, until now I've done most of this tree a little bowl where the flowers go some of the flowers and a squirrel um, and some of this bird at the top there so I haven't done loads but it does take me ages um, I did find that I was actually stitching with a, a needle that needed replacing really so I'd ordered some and I finally changed my needle and it was so much quicker to sew why was I struggling <laughs> just because I hadn't got the right size in my stash and I just you can order them off the internet you don't even have to go out of the house what was I thinking but I think that that'll look lovely I'm being too lazy to get a bigger clip frame and I've just left this side out of the frame so that I don't sort of squash the work. Does anybody else put a clip over the work? Does it affect it? Anybody know? Anyway, I thought I'd show you the back of it because I'm really proud of how this is coming on. So normally I have, it just looks a mess and I've made a conscious effort to make it neater in the back and it almost looks as neat on the back as the front I'm very impressed with myself <laughs> do you think my head's getting bigger oh dear that's what Adam would say to me <laughs> there we go so that's my cross stitch and I think what I'll do is I'll only show you this every couple of weeks just so that you can see a decent amount of work done to it but I am glad I've picked that up again um, I just lately I just want to do all the crafts what is going on <laughs> so I will talk about my bobbin lace next so the last time I spoke to you last week um, I'm talking I'm speaking the obvious now obviously oh no I've just flicked my bobbin lace everywhere hopefully I haven't tangled it up too much So I showed you this piece with loads of ends in, but I think I found some felt that I think it'll look nice on. Now, just excuse all these ends, and it isn't laid flat enough really, but I'm just comparing it to see whether the colours look alright on this felt, and I think that that looks quite nice. Um, 
because it's a sort of a mid-tone you can kind of see all the threads on it I think um, and also I love this colour so even if you can't see every little bit of the bobbin lace I think that'll look out and look nice I did actually buy this to do Luna Lapin's um, coat which she's gone up there now <laughs> she's up the top but I have to get some more right I've also started another bobbin lace project which I'll grab now So because all my bobbins were full, I thought I'd better use some of them up and make a, a, a bookmark. So this is what I'm working on at the moment. Oh, my pin cushion's in the way. Let's move that. Let's get that out to one side. There we go. So you can see the start of a bookmark and it's white with fuchsia pink down the sides and a little navy blue sort of square in the middle. I think that'll be all right. I think you can never have too many bookmarks, can you? <laughs> and you can see that I've got one of the pins that lovely Zoe from Pins and Needles had given me and I've put that on there. I didn't want to put them all on at once, but I think I'll change them one at a time. <laughs> so there we go. I also wanted to share with you that I actually use um, these stitch holders to keep my bobbins together so that they're in the right order. I think I picked these up um, out of a magazine, I think, at one time, but they're lovely bright colours um, and it just keeps all my bobbins in the right order. So there we go, that's another bobbin, uh, bobbin lace project started. Another craft. <laughs> And we're on to quilting now. We're on to the last one. It's gone quick, isn't it, really? We're rambling on. <laughs> so I was talking about on maybe two episodes ago about this project that I've been planning. Now I've started some of it um, and I thought I'd show you the fabric that I'm going to use. So I'd picked out these fabrics. Oh, let me just splay these out so that you can see how they sort of go together. So I'd picked these fabrics and they're quite subtle colours that go with my living room because I wanted to make a wall hanging that would actually go somewhere instead of just making random coloured ones that I think mm, doesn't go anywhere in the house. <laughs> so I'd picked out these fabrics and I'd actually picked these up from Edinburgh um, but it wasn't the yarn festival it was we'd gone to a little village to the north of Edinburgh which I can't think of right now. <laughs> Um, but if I remember I'll pop it on the screen so I picked it up from a lovely quilt shop up there um, but I needed some additional fabrics so the plan is that I'm going to do a sort of Japanese themed wall hanging I know that like this kind of blue isn't necessarily traditionally Japanese well I think don't think it is anyway um, but I wanted it to go with my living room so this is the colours it's going to be and my friend had given me a pattern for a little origami kimono this is made out of fabric um, so that I think that's really lovely and I thought I'd use this in combination with two other blocks um, so that I could make a piece for the wall now I wanted to put a section where there's going to be um, like a bamboo block made out of foundation pleating which I've designed myself um, which I've just sketched out at the moment <laughs> so I'm not going to show you but I then picked up a couple more fabrics to do the bamboo so that they were sort of delicate colours that kind of went with the others as well so this one is what I'm going to do most of the bamboo in, and I'm just going to have a tiny little strips of this darker colour so that it doesn't take away too much from the other sort of um, turquoisey blue greeny colours but I shall show you those in the coming episode I'm hoping to get it finished by next week <clears throat> so I'm going to be doing um, a bamboo bit on one side and then cherry blossoms over on the other side with the kimono in the middle. So we'll see how that goes. I've cut I've cut the sort of centre block out, <laughs> so we will see how, how it goes. I've planned out exactly what I'm doing, but I might change my mind, so I won't tell you in detail. Um, if anybody knows where this pattern for this kimono, um, origami kimono is from, please do tell me um, because my friend couldn't remember where she got it from um, and she'd 
she'd taken it from somewhere so if I could just uh, find out where it was from then I could tell everyone else where they could get a copy from. I don't want to just give it as a free pattern obviously because um, I think it's a paid for one. Right so that's my quilting sort of talked about. What have we got on the list? I've buried my list in fabric now. <laughs> um, I think I've got two sections left to go. Blast from the past, where I'm going to talk about some of my nanny's dresses. And then I'm going to talk about the shop update. I'm getting really warm in this cardigan. Wool is so much warmer than the cotton one I was wearing before. I'm going to change. There we go. So, right. Barbara's got um, one of my nanny's dresses on. So let's invite her in. Come on, Barbara. Thank you, Barbara. So Barbara is wearing another one of my nanny's dresses. Um, this one is the same pattern as I've showed you for the last two weeks, um, but it's a completely different effect again, where well, my auntie has used one sort of coloured panel with two planes either side, which I think is quite effective. Um, it's actually fully, fully lined this one, so it must have been made for a nice event and it's got some really nice um, pink lining under there and you can see it's all hand stitched in place underneath um, and hand stitched the hem. You, it is overlocked as well, so you can see an overlocked edge, um, but it's all finished ever so nicely. So again, it's got darts on the bust. And it's got a full length sleeve. Actually, I think she's changed the place of the darts on this one. So there's um, darts on the arms up the side of the sleeve there to shape it into the um, the cuff sort of thing, which is nice. So I think that I, I think the other one might have had some darts up here on the front as well. That's quite interesting. So unfortunately, um, one Barbara is a bit too big for Nanny's dresses, even when she's adjusted to her smallest size. But the zip has actually broken on these. Um, so I don't know how long it's been broken for, but obviously they've been in the wardrobe for 40 years. So it could well have just, I don't know. Well, it can't have just broken itself, can it? <laughs> she must have broken it at the time. Um, so the zip's all nicely hand sewn in, you can see all the beautiful pink lining right um, all the way through the dress, but it's actually lined in the sleeves as well, which is really nice. Um, and I just love this clean, fresh sort of um, purple material with this just this little bit of detail here. She's actually got a matching waistcoat for this, so I'm going to just go and grab that. So this is the matching waistcoat that went through it with it, and it's also lined with pink um, material as well. Um, unfortunately, Barbara's shoulders are a bit wide, so she doesn't really fit in the, the waistcoat at all. It's a good job that there's a zip at the back so she can fit in the dress. Um, so this is a plain waistcoat that sort of matches in, or it does match in, with this panel in there. And I don't think I'd necessarily choose waistcoats because I'm not a big waistcoat fan. Um, but I think she used to look really smart. Um, Mum used to say that Nanny looked really smart with her waistcoats on to match. So wasn't that lovely? Because I have two more dresses the same pattern, I'm going to show you them all today. Um, to save you getting the same dress shown to you every week. So again, I'm going to show you these two again. So this one I showed you last episode, which is all plain colour. And then this one is the one I showed you in the episode before, where you've got the, the patterned fabric at the top and the plain fabric at the bottom. And I've got two more to show you. So Barbara's kindly agreed to show the other two dresses as well. So this is all made of the same pattern. Well, I think it is anyway. Um, but this one is obviously different um, colour placement with the different parts of the um, um, garment. So you can see there is a seam that goes up into the bust area here and this is the panel that was the contrast fabric on the last one I just showed you but here it, she's used one fabric at the top and one fabric for the skirt in set, instead um, and you can see that it sort of highlights the waistline rather than up into the bust when you do a different fabric in this section. So this is the sort of stretchy fabric and I think someone said it's called crimpoline so it's an old fashioned sort of jersey type of material with a bit of stretch. Now this one hasn't got as much stretch as one of the other ones I showed you before um, and she's actually used and um, just an overlocked edge um, for the bottom here. It's got the same darts under the bust um, and at the back here. Again, 
can't quite do it up on Barbara. It is a stretchy fabric, but I didn't want to push it too much. <laughs> and then there's these um, seams on the cuff line um, to shape it into the um, the cuff, which I think is lovely. Um, but isn't this blue gorgeous? I like this um, skirt material in the blue. I think that's really effective. So we've got one more to show you of the same pattern. I'm afraid Barbara's a bit too big. I couldn't get it over um, her bust line because um, it just joins at the back with a zip. But this one is plain all over, but it's made of um, like a thickish wool. Um, this one is lined inside, but the sleeves aren't lined in this one. And it's just been hand stitched, well, overlocked and hand stitched in the cuff. And I'll just hit myself in the face with <laughs> If I turn it inside out, you'll be able to see um, how it's been lined just on the body. Um, again, it's gone back to, there's a dart that's on the elbow instead of all the way down the arm, which is interesting. There must have been two modifications in the pattern, um, unless she combined it with a different pattern, I don't know. So it's been lined with a pink lining, or a purpley lining, I'd say, and you can see that there is a panel there. See, I've not turned her outside in completely. Let's get the, the skirt through here. So it's been fully lined at the top there. It's got a nice clean round line around the neckline. And then the body and the skirt has been fully lined in the purple. It's been all hand stitched on the side of the zip. Um, and this one actually, the lining's been joined into the, the skirt rather than as a separate thing and that's all neatly hand stitched in so that's on the inside and then it's finished off nicely. I love a garment when it's been completely lined, isn't it lovely? So I'll turn that back onto the right side and show you the outside again. Um, but this is the last one of this pattern. She obviously really liked this one pattern must have fitted her really well um, but it does make a hell of a difference as to what material it's made out of as to how the fit um, sort of works so oh gosh you can see how slim she was it barely goes past my nipples <laughs> oh dear so <laughs> those are the dresses that are all from the same pattern and I thought it was interesting to show you them all together so that you can see how different panelling uh, makes a garment look quite different. A really lovely lady, and I'm sorry I can't remember your name, um, but she found a pattern um, that she thought that would be the one that matches the um, the garments that um, my auntie made for my nanny. And I will pop a picture up here. It's the 5850 Simplicity. And it really does look like it. The um, the neckline looks slightly different, but that's just under the bust. That seam is there. So I'm going to see if I can get hold um, of a copy of the pattern. But it isn't one that's been reprinted, so it'll be in smaller sizes. So I'm hoping I can get hold of it like a size 18 to upscale it <laughs> a little bit. Well, we'll see. But it's really nice to know uh, that there is a pattern out there that um, I could possibly get hold of anyway. So that's really cool. Um, so that's my blast from the past for this week and now I've just got some information on my shop update so if you're not interested um, don't forget to like and subscribe and I shall see you next week if not I've got a couple of um, bag designs I wanted to show you and some yarn so first of all I have got um, let's show you the leaf one first so this is a sort of turquoisey colour with a leaf applique on there with free motion stitching i sketched this out and i was going to put something else on the bag as well but i thought no i think that'll spoil it a little bit um and i've just put craft house magic on a little leaf free motioned on the back as well and it's got this beautiful fern fabric um it's the same as what's on the front let me turn it inside out so you can see the fabric a little bit better um so it's this fern print it's difficult to see um, fabric when it's in the shadow, so it's easier to just turn it inside out. It's got this beautiful fern print, and I was going for a fern when I was doing the free, uh, the applique free motion, but then I thought I like the look of this sort of shape better, so I can't really call it a fern bag, so it'll have to be a leaf. <laughs> I got um, inspired by a slightly different shape, but there we go. I've also got the bits and bobs that go with that. So the circular needle case where you can put your circular needles in, wrap that up 
and put the little elastic around the button to hold um, your circular needles in place. I've got some Notions pouches um, which sits nicely open on the table, some scissor cases with the option of getting scissors to go with it and some DPN cases. Um, if you do buy a bag I normally put in a little um, lavender sachet which I always think makes it smell nice. If you are allergic to lavender please tell me before you place an order. Um, and secondly I decided there was a lot of blue in my shop at the moment so let's get some pink in there. <laughs> so I've Oh, actually the pink's really not coming up as bright as it is in real life so I'll pop a picture on there. It's funny how this camera really doesn't pick up pinks for some reason but I've got some butterflies, free motion appliqued um, on there with the same sort of craft house magic but then I've done a butterfly free motion on the back and I love this fabric. I'll turn this inside out. So these are medium sized bags that I'm focusing on at the moment but I love this print and again it's not coming up quite as um, it is in real life, so I'll pop a picture on the screen. I'll also be um, putting in the shop, um, that's how it sort of looks when it's the box bottoms opened out. Um, I'll also be putting the other things, so Notions pouches for this print as well, DPN cases, scissor cases and the um, circular needle cases as well so they're all available separately so you don't have to buy them all at once and again the little lavender sachet for that print so there's two sets coming out on Friday shop update will be at 7 p.m. on Friday the what's the date on Friday tomorrow is, is the 14th <laughs> I should be able to add 13 plus 1 to work out what tomorrow's date is, oh dear. So 7 o'clock on the 14th of um, June. I think I'm getting tired now. I think I need a sip of my coat. I've just got one more thing to show you and it's um, a new colourway that I've got. And this is a, a grey blue tone um, that I actually dyed as a custom order. But I love it so much that I'm going to have this in the shop as a colourway. And I'm going to call this Ordinary World after the Duran Duran song. Because I was listening to it in the shower this morning. <laughs> and I thought that would be the perfect name. So this will be Ordinary World. And I've got plans of actually making a shawl with this with some other greys. And I shall go and grab those now so I can show you what my plan is. So my plan is to put this new colourway in with two existing ones that I have. So this dark grey tonal is living on a prayer. So this one is Ordinary Will which is a, a bluey grey colour. And then I've got a pale grey speckled which has got quite a lot of cream coming through there. And I thought that those three would make a really nice shawl that you could wear with anything really. So basically greys. Um, but I think that'll be lovely. Mm. So, I have to decide what pattern it'll be there. <laughs> so that's all I've got for today, I think. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more, and I shall see you next week. Hopefully I don't have quite so many different things that I've just started and got some finished objects. <laughs> see you next time. Bye!